morning, Phil Lisbon, day two. Nice to see you all, some good friends. Yeah, take a seat, take a seat. Uh, my name's Ashwanth. I'm a startup operator here at Protocol Labs and excited to be moderating this panel today with our two esteemed panelists, uh, Stefan and Joao. So how about we give them one more round? <laughs> well, we're super excited today to talk about a 2022 look back on the state of network growth. And so even before we dive in, could you give us a quick kind of intro of who you are and kind of uh, what you do at PL and how this works with uh, network growth and how it works in the Filecoin ecosystem. Sure, absolutely. Uh, Stefan Vervaud, Protocol Labs, uh, responsible for network growth. Network growth includes our storage provider ecosystem, our Web2 client ecosystem, um, which are two of the five ecosystems that we're going after today. And so our goal is obviously to grow the network from both sides and um, you know, uh, do that through programs, um, enablement, and, and so on. Great, thank you. Joao? Yeah, I am João Fiodaro, and I'm leading client growth. And what that means is I'm responsible for helping onboard data to the Filecoin network um, and figuring out whether it's enterprises or uh, individuals or on-ramps, really helping them onboard as much data as possible to the Filecoin network. It makes a ton of sense. And mm -hmm. can you describe this relationship between network growth and the Filecoin ecosystem? Because Filecoin is really a community protocol. So is there maybe an, an analogy or you know, something that you always kind of go back to when you describe the relationship between uh, the network growth team and, and Filecoin? Oh, I mean, for me, it's, uh, it's a two-sided marketplace, right? And so we are connecting the clients, the Web2 clients with the storage providers. And so for us, uh, the reason why we have this one team now is because we're aligned on the same OKRs, we're aligned on the same um, UX and user experience, and we believe that um, to achieve that, we have to look at the full end-to-end -end user experience, just like when you take an Uber or when you take uh, or you store something in the cloud. Um, you want to make sure that from uh, the first time the customer interacts with our ecosystem or our network, that they have a full end-to-end -end good experience until the actual data is actually stored and retrievable and retrieved, et cetera. So that's the reason why you, know, you can make some analogies to, traditional, uh, to the traditional Web2 world. Um, you know, some say it's more like you know, uh, an Uber or Airbnb, but it's way more than that because we're really enterprise focused and we can build multiple of these on top of Filecoin. So we're really building the platform Right, so that, that enables thousands uh, of these applications that can support that. Yeah, yeah, I, I really see us and the team as enablers, right? We work with the storage providers who may be onboarding clients and doing BD themselves, whether that's through enabling them with things like sales collateral and marketing, uh, but we also think about the underlying processes and tools that enable actual clients to onboard data. We ourselves are not responsible for onboarding data unless it's really as a, a means of researching uh, what the gaps are and then you know, working with the ecosystem to plug those gaps. Um, but it's, it, yeah, it's really sort of laying the foundations for a thriving ecosystem. Yeah, that makes a ton of sense. Yeah. And I, I want to come back to the sales collateral and marketing because I think you, know, you all have done a ton of work there. But before we get there, you know, what are some of the key metrics that you think exemplify the success of the network growth team over the past uh, you know, eight, eight to 12 months? Are, are there any that you really latch on to and you say, you know, this is kind of what we point to and say this is a, a measure of success? Oh, yeah. Um, I'll start from the storage provider side. So last year, we, if you would have asked me this last year, the goal was all about uh, quantity, um, as many as possible, as fast as possible. Um, because Juan would say you only have seconds in life, so how many uh, SPs are you going to add uh, every single day? And um, today, this year is different. So our KPIs are more focused on quality. So we have more than 4,000 storage provider systems out there. So right now, we kind of shifted this year on how can we enable more storage providers to actively store data and become more than just you know, initially what was seen as a minor to actually providing quality services that support enterprise customers by storing data, so actually becoming a storage provider. So a lot of our efforts right now and the way we track success is to validate how many of those storage providers are actively taking deals. Yeah. And, um, and then the next level up is what Joao's working on is you know, bringing new customers to the network. Got it. 
Yeah. Joao? Yeah, so to double click on the client side, right? It's just a demand side of the network. And what we care about is how much data is being onboarded to the network. Um, you know, going back to the Filecoin master plan, right? Step one is to have supply. Step two is to onboard a bunch of data. Step three is to add compute over the state and the data itself off chain. And that's where a real data economy will emerge from. And so very much centered on that second part, which really implies how do we get to lots and lots of petabytes onboarded every single day. Some of the things that my team looks at are on a daily basis, what is the onboarding rate of verified deals? Um, what we're talking about today is around 3.5, sorry, about 3.5 petabytes a day, which is amazing. Um, and we're well on our way to our goal of 350 petabytes of data stored by the end of the year. Um, we have also the number of clients, right? We care about who is actually onboarding that data. And so uh, we take a careful look at the actual enterprises, the customers, the programs, things like Slingshot that are contributing public, verified, open, useful data to the network. Um, and then also, how are they onboarding data, right? What are the on-ramps, whether it's Web3.storage or whether it's Singularity that I mentioned yesterday or Estuary? There's lots of different ways people can onboard data. So without going into too much of a rabbit hole, all these things holistically, two sides of the same coin, it's a really interesting dynamic between supply and demand. Yeah. Oh, go for and it. just to add to that, like today, to give you some numbers, of those uh, more than 4,000 systems, 13% of them today are actively storing data. And more than 400 of these systems are currently filled up to more than 75%. So we track, and we're not only tracking that across the network, but we also look at how many uh, small, medium, and large sized, and extra large sized uh, storage providers do we have in our ecosystem. So we have views on, you know, uh, because to, to give you an example, more than 50% of our systems out there, which is fully decentralized, meaning we don't run any of these systems, right? Uh, and also none of them are running in the cloud. And um, they're all really, you know, institutions that are running their own systems. 50, more than 50% of those are between one and 10 pebby bytes of, of data. Now, what uh, capacity, what does that mean? They're typically running like a full rack, right? Between a media, a half and a, and a full size rack, which means that at that, typically at that size, you're moving into a real like co-location, real data center, tier three data center type of environment, which is perfect for storing enterprise data. It's no longer just running at home. Some of them can, but in general, you wouldn't do that just because you want uptime. You want like a solid network connectivity and uh, you know redundant power and so on to make sure that you uh, don't don't get slashed, right? Because there's a lot more money at stake. Right. Well, I mean, you, you both rattled off a couple of very impressive numbers, and I think when you're so caught up in, in the metrics, sometimes it's hard to appreciate what those numbers are. But Joao, you mentioned you know, 3.5 pebbybytes onboarded daily, 350 towards the end of the year. I mean, that's incredible. Stefan, you mentioned 4,000 storage fighters. 50% of those are between 1 to 10 pebbybytes in size. Very impressive numbers, and it sounds like you know, moving forward, those goals are going to be um, accelerated. And so as the community you know, wants to keep up and keep track, of the success of, of these different metrics, um, where can they go and do that? Where would you recommend the community looks to to kind of you know, keep an eye on some of these metrics? Yeah, uh, the Starboard team is a team that is in the ecosystem working on network analytics. They have an amazing dashboard that you can look at. That's the network health dashboard, star, starboard.ventures, I believe, um, that has all the great information you can find around the amount of deals that are being made on a daily basis, where they're coming from, what program they represent, whether it's you know Phil Plus as an example of a, a really important uh, facilitator and all this, um, and uh, other people you know within my team specifically are exploring uh, building better dashboards that are also external av externally available where we can actually have a better sense of who these clients actually are, which is very important. So we can start understanding the dynamics of the market. Uh, with regard to things like the industry, with regard to the type of data that's being onboarded, and all of these things ultimately will help us really establish product market fit, which is, is really that crucial stage that we are at. Yeah, I'm sure the community will be paying close attention to some of those dashboards that you mentioned and looking forward to building them out. Yeah.
in the second half uh, of our time here, I kind of want to shift our attention uh, more away from the numbers and, and on some of the programs that your teams have been building and working on over the course of the last year. As we know, being a storage provider is, is uh, not necessarily the easiest thing, and so there have been a couple of different programs that network team, the network growth team has developed over the last year. So, Stefan, I was wondering if you could kind of walk us yeah. through a few of those. <clears throat> sure. I mean, look, uh, what's interesting about building an economy, because which is what we're doing, is that you have to look at the full spectrum of what it takes to build a business. And so um, we've built an accelerator program with ESPA, which is really an accelerated program that is focused on bringing new storage providers into the ecosystem. Because what we've seen is that even traditional telcos, Web2 managed service providers are interested in, um, in joining our ecosystem. They have a hard time understanding what this is all about. So that's one program. We have now like more than 50 businesses that are coming through that program uh, just alone this year. The second part is like making sure there's enough capital flowing into our into our uh, ecosystem, and so we've worked with the Web3, um, you know, crypto uh, firms and lending firms to really enable lower collateralized loans um, that would allow our storage providers to, you know, get faster access to the to fill, which is required for you to pledge, which is basically how we hold our uh, storage providers accountable. Um, and then, of course, there's training material that we've built, um, our own landing page. We create sp.falcon.io. So basically, if you want to know more about how to become a storage provider, you go to sp.falcon.io. You'll find all the programs there. Um, and then, of course, this alliance that we just announced yesterday, which um, you know is just a beginning, which is, again, a collaboration between all the hardware vendors, but then also the GSI, so the, um, the integrators, the consulting firms, to help bring you know, Filecoin, lip to p and, um, um, and IPFS in, um, you know, the C-suites basically and help kind of, you know, message that technology to, to those uh, Web2 customers. Yeah. Yeah, Joe. Uh, I can speak to some of the more uh, data onboarding centric programs. Uh, so, you know, as Stefan mentioned, we're starting, to, we're, we're helping an entire ecosystem stand up businesses that require tons of capital, tons of hardware. But then the question is, well, you know, how are they actually contributing value to the network? They need to take on deals. And deals really represent uh, open, well, data, right? And so there's a bunch here that uh, our team, client growth, and the data programs team led by Deep Kapoor that have uh, really powered uh, a lot of growth. So to name a few, we have things like Slingshot, which is, uh, I alluded to previously, which is a program aimed at onboarding large amounts of public useful data. You know, consider things like the AWS Open Registry, where you have really useful uh, data sets, whether it's for machine learning, climate science, all types of research, um, and really facilitating the mechanism by which new storage providers can onboard these deals in as seamless a way as possible. And then it's not just that. We have things like moon landing that are complementary to this um, process, whereby we really accelerate the way that a new storage provider in the ecosystem can take on these deals. And then there's also things that are around process, right? So eFill Plus, Enterprise Fill Plus, is a really cool new initiative that we are exploring where the goal here is to understand what the needs of enterprises are such that we can actually facilitate the process for them because obviously that's really where we're headed. Uh, if 80% if of the world's data is private and is in the hands of businesses, we really need to figure out better ways of enabling them and onboarding them to the ecosystem from a client perspective. So there's a bunch of really cool stuff that's happening. Yeah, that's a really good point, Joao, and I kind of want to dig in a little bit deeper there because it seems like the way that you're approaching storage provider growth and client growth is moving away from small scale and into this large enterprise scale where you know really competing with some of the big players in this space. And so, Joao, you mentioned a little bit more about uh, eFill Plus and, and some of the programs that are geared towards the enterprise space, but maybe, Stefan, how, how are we going to turn with an eye towards the future of building these enterprise storage providers? Oh wow, I thought you were going to ask it to him. <laughs> um, well, it's a combination of multiple things. Uh, one, we need everyone's help to bring in customers to our network so we can demonstrate um, you know, how existing customers, just like yesterday, right? Uh, Atlas, the, uh, this project at CERN is using Filecoin. We have to demonstrate it, so it's a combination of like, um, uh, marketing, but also 
tooling, creating the tooling, right, um, and actually improving also Lotus, um, our Falcon implementation to, to harden that stack better so that it's more scalable, uh, more performance, and really like when I look at next year, um, a lot of our effort is going to be around that. And so, you know, our goals are to really like help um, the storage providers with, you know, implementing an infrastructure that will not only scale but also be able to like, you know, trade, for example, uh, sectors because right now we're very focused on ceiling as a service because what we're seeing is we're seeing different layers appear into our network, right? So instead of just being, I'm a storage provider, I do everything, right? Um, I'm, I'm creating the car files or I'm sealing the data, I'm, um, I'm proving the data. So we're seeing that those layers are actually um, are separate businesses. So we're seeing businesses that are very focused on onboarding data, we're seeing businesses that are very focused on sealing, we're seeing businesses that are just wholesale storage providers that are just, you know, don't want to do business development, just sit there and wait for deals or do some you know, trade some deals for um, sealed sectors. Um, so I think you know us understanding what those different layers are and really understanding what the requirements are to really build better uh, technology to support this in our stack. And this is not just a Lotus, but also Venus, right? Because we have four implementations is going to be crucial. And then, of course, community outreach. So one of the other big items that we're focusing on right now is you know, making sure that we also have more local events and translate in the local language. For example, we went to Korea. Awesome, awesome community. But what we've learned is that we don't translate our technical content in, um, in Korean, right? And so we, we need to do a better job at like, making sure all the cool stuff that we're talking about this week, which is really dense, gets to our um, extended communities in the field. So we have Hired community lead um, that's going to like next year and, and is already doing this right, working with the ecosystem to help translate some of that stuff. Yeah, and diving in a little bit more on the marketing and community aspects, I know the network growth team has made a ton of strides. It sounds like since March of this year, there have been six international meetups with uh, the storage provider and client community. Joao, why is this? You know, why are these touch bases so important? And you know, do you have maybe a specific memory from one of these meetups where you know yeah. you, you latch onto and you're like, you know, this is why we do this? I, I think social proof is a big component of this, right? It, it's baffling to me when you realize that there, this really is an ecosystem that has, you know, billions, well, about a billion dollar invested in it in terms of the actual capital allocation. It's, it's really significant. And so you hear these numbers, but then it only materializes when you go to these events and you see the breadth of the people who are involved in this, whether they're builders, storage providers, clients, People are really building this ecosystem together, and so you know it's it's really great. Uh, for me, what is particularly memorable, I think, was from Phil Singapore, where I think it, it really illustrated um, again the, the breadth of of people, right? Like it was, we had Phil that VC, we had the storage provider meetup, we had some amazing stuff happening there with. Uh, you know, sold out venues and people telling me that the Filecoin events were by far the coolest ones, uh, you know, despite token 2049. And same here, by the way, I've heard the same thing. You know, the Filecoin event, you know, you have everything else happening in the context of Web Summit and all the other interesting blockchain events, but it's, it's really cool to see the energy in, in these events that the Filecoin Foundation has put together. That's great. And yeah. I'd be remiss not to let Stefan have a chance to talk about the IDC reports and some oh. of these other you know, marketing collateral that have come out in the last year. Oh, yeah. So we, we also worked with um, IDC, which is a, an analyst firm that's very prevalent in the Web2 space, because one of our big initiatives is to create more awareness for you know, decentralized storage in the Web2 space. And so what we're doing is we're educating the analysts and press from the Web2 world on Filecoin. And um, I can tell you, I mean, if you've been in this ecosystem, even if you've only been in this ecosystem for a couple of months, you know, and you go back to Web2, and you go, you know, probably some of you have encountered this, right? You're trying to explain it to your friend, what are you actually doing? You quickly realize, wow, you know, they have a lot of catching up to do. It goes straight over their head, and then you end up explaining the basics of Web3. And, you know, it takes like two hours to get eventually what you're actually doing today. So um, we got a lot of education to do. Um, and so that's our goal. So it's going to be a long road, meaning we're going to have to continue to, like, bring people along. Um, our, our focus area right now predominantly is like, you know, enable those that are already on board with Web3 because they have the belief system, they're entrepreneurs, they're visionaries, those are the people we want right now. That's why you're sitting in this room. 
Um, and you know, those that are willing to come in, welcome. Everyone's welcome. Those that are that are left behind, that's that's unfortunately their, their problem. So they will be hit with a train in a couple of years from now when it's too late to catch up. So anyway. <laughs> well, in our last 15 seconds, we were chatting before we got on stage. Sounds like the network growth team has some pretty uh, amazing goals for the next year. Can you spend you know 10 seconds outlining what those goals are and where you, where you want to be next year by this time? Yeah, we are going to hopefully 10x the amount of data onboarded. Um, so we're shooting for two exabytes. Yeah. Uh, Two exabytes, a really significant amount, which uh, implies about 10 petabytes by the end of next year being onboarded. Um, you know, so really the question is, where is all this data coming from? Uh, we need to do uh, amazing work. It starts with education and marketing, goes through you know, the infrastructure and tooling and process and everything. Um, but really, we're shooting for you know, 500 clients with over one petabyte of data onboarded by the end of next year. We've seen a couple of really great ones already announced. You know, CERN is an amazing example. But um, we'll need many more of those. So if you have ideas, if you have contacts of people who really would benefit from decentralized storage um, that is immutable, that is much more cost efficient, reach out to the team, and we'll put you in touch with the storage providers um, and, and help us meet our goals. Yeah, and I would say that um, I've never worked for a company that's so transparent. And a lot of you may not know this, but every month we do an all hands that is public on YouTube. So if you want to know what we as a team are doing, just join us on our YouTube channels and you'll see Joao, Deep, Sa uh, myself, <laughs> uh, Ashwant uh, present. And so you can see what we're doing and how we're reaching our goals or what, trash uh, what dashboards we're using to track our KPI so you can stay in touch with you know, our progress. So please do so. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you both so much for your time. Amazing to hear about all the great things Network Growth is doing and looking forward to seeing what the teams do uh, next year. Thank you all. All right. Thank you.